This video starts on page 6 of the neck process guide. So first thing is to apply our headstock veneer. We're using sticky back 3M veneer and we want the veneer to start just to the left of that edge by my right finger. Uh, it'll overlap the headstock, that's fine, just needs to cover the whole thing. Uh, this sticky back is sensitive to pressure and so a wood block helps that. A sharp knife and a lot of pressure will cut through it. And you don't have to trim exactly because we're going to sand this later, but this is faster than sanding. Here we use 150 grit sanding block. Uh, we're trying to level the edge and also give it a slight chamfer. A few swipes is all it takes in most cases. And now for the transition here, we want the veneer to not be higher than the fretboard surface. You don't want to sand a lot, but just push the veneers down until it's not higher. And we can check that with a straight edge. Okay, now we want to mark the location of the nut slot. The nut slot ideally would wipe out the irregularity between the veneer and the neck surface. Here we are adjusting the height of the table saw blade for the nut slot and I use a caliper depth stop at 3 16ths and I lower the blade until it, the depth stop contacts that insert. That's the same mark that we put on before. We line it up with the blade, which is gonna cut a 1 8 inch wide slot. And pass it through. Hopefully, that slot will make it look like um, both surfaces are even. Okay, now we're ready to lay out the headstock tuner locations. First, I place a few tick marks, 3 8 of an inch inboard from each side. So one down on the nut end and one far away on each side. These small um, carpenter squares are handy for lining up edges. Okay, now I draw a center line through those tick marks. And now I mark off the hole locations. And I just need to do this on one side, as you'll see in a bit. One and a half, three, and four and a half are the hole locations and six inch is the end of the neck. Excuse me, end of the headstock. Okay, now I can transfer those one and a half to the other side, three and so on, and mark the end of headstock line. Now I want to transfer that end of headstock line to the back of the headstock, and we'll see why in just a bit. So a carpet um, combination square is handy for that. Okay, now I'm laying out uh, the simple V-shape for the headstock end. You can do whatever design you like. And you can make the headstock longer if you like as well. Six inch, I think, usually looks pretty good. The only caution on the, if you do your own design, is don't get too close to the tuner hole, the upper tuner holes. Okay, now I'm marking the layout lines for the body joint screws and also the end of the neck. Now this neck is particularly short. Uh, there's the, uh, the lateral line for the holes. This is the end of the neck line. So this will be cut off here. Normally you'll have about a quarter inch there. And these holes are one half inch inboard from each side. Okay, we're ready to drill the headstock tuners. That backing block is helpful to support the back surface, as we'll see in a bit. 
Okay, we're using a quarter inch brad point drill bit. This is these bits are only for wood and they're very good for wood. Okay, to line up the hole the center hole with the drill bit, I peck drill. Just put a little indentation to verify the center is where you want it. And then enter the wood slowly. Uh, that'll prevent fraying. And then drill through. You can drill through pretty quickly. But the pecking, you want you want that to be lined up as close as you can. And you want to enter the wood slowly to minimize the tear out. I'll show you what happens if you don't do that. This headstock turned out pretty good. Very little tearing or fraying edge. This has this is a different headstock, um, which I did fray the edges. You can see. Um, and if you if if that's the case, just take a small drill bit or deburring tool. Deburring, like I've shown there, is ideal, and you can get rid of it. Okay, the back side of the headstock. If you support it, you shouldn't get any tear out on the back side. Now we're drilling 1 16th holes, uh, pilot holes, for the body joint bolts. Okay, it's helpful if you don't, it's tempting, but don't take the um, drill bit all the way, excuse me, the chuck all the way down to the neck. It'll mar it. It's, it's easy to do that. Stop it short. Okay, now we've turned the neck over, and we're going to drill uh, part way through a blind hole, and this is for to receive an insert. Okay, here I've marked a, um, a look at a depth stop of about 11 sixteenths, and I make sure I adjust that depth stop until the drill bit bottoms out there, not all the way through, but most of the way through. Line up the um, the big drill bit with the old 1 16th hole peck drilling again. And these don't really matter if you tear the wood. Okay, those are blind holes. And now we can install the threaded inserts. So these take a six millimeter Allen key. And first I use the Allen key vertically so that I can keep that insert pointed perpendicular to the next surface, kind of like tapping. Once you've got the insert most of the way in, you can convert to um, that kind of Allen key placement and sink them into the bottom. Don't tighten too hard because you don't want to break through the back surface. You'll feel it bottom out. Here we are doing the other one and tightening that one. And if all goes well, you'll have two inserts um, about a sixteenth inch below the wood surface. Now we're, we want to cut the end of the neck off, um, but we don't want the table saw blade to run into that uh, steel reinforcing bar. It shouldn't, but we want to verify where that bar is, so that's what that last pencil mark was for. Now we're transferring the end of neckline to the side of the neck. I'm just checking what, what that cut will look like. And now we can safely cut the neck, uh, the end of the neck off without um, hitting the steel bar. Okay, it looks, uh, aesthetically, I think it looks a little better if you chamfer that edge um, on the back of the neck where it meets the body joint, but that's up to you. And now we're ready to cut our headstock design. That's, we're looking at the back of the headstock that um, sits on the bandsaw flat. And I'm using that wood block with my left hand to, so I don't have to get my left hand close to the blade.